Hello everyone, welcome back. Call My Teaches Photography, live from New York. Welcome back, photo class number 46. Today we have an episode I think you'll appreciate. We're going to call it 6x9 medium format versus 35 millimeter film. All right, but first, a shout out. Every episode this year, I will try and give a shout out to a YouTube photography channel that has inspired me and that has educated me. Today's shout out goes to a photographer in Finland, Ari Jaxi. He has a YouTube photography channel called Shoot on Film by Ari Jaxi. J A A K S I. What a wonderful fellow. He is a photographer, he's a musician, and he is an educator. I first started watching Ari's YouTube videos when I was watching this video of this gentleman uh, who loves to take complicated snow pictures in his neighborhood, in his country, and they come out absolutely beautiful and he explains his exposure process his development process now he is not stuck to one camera in fact that's another reason why I find him very uh, entertaining and educational the second video I watched of his was he was using this gigantic Graflex RB rotating back series B camera it's huge you you know what they look like they look like a chimney and you look down in this box oh fantastic he shoots with uh holgers roll a cord roll a flex on and on and on so go to his channel please subscribe to shoot on film by ari jaxi and uh i will have a link below in the description go to his website subscribe and you will be educated Ari good job the shout outs for you okay let's go on today we are going to discuss 6x9 versus 35 millimeter okay nothing says it more than an example of the two formats 6x9 and 35 millimeter this is one frame of each. Now, if you remember the way I explained it um, 20 episodes ago, is I kind of related it to a tattoo artist. If you go to a tattoo artist and you say, I want a tattoo, but I only want it this big, there's going to be less information in the smaller tattoo than in a larger tattoo. That's just a crude way of explaining why, in my opinion, medium format 6x9 is better for detail than 35mm. Now, some of the most famous photographs in the world have been taken with 35mm. Okay? It's the, the most widely used film camera in the world 35 millimeter cameras okay for example this Fujika ST701 okay uh, sells currently for a hundred bucks with the lens on eBay today I just checked okay um, it comes with uh, in this case and I think it, it was part of the kit it comes with a 1.8 it's pretty fast 55 millimeter Fujinon lens. The results of this camera are just beautiful. Now, the ST701 did come with a place to put a flat cell battery, all right, and it had a light meter built in. Let's see if you can see the needles on the side. Okay, do you see that? Let me see if I can put my hand up. You see the needle? on the side okay it was a built-in light meter oh this isn't that easy <laughs> okay come on a little more okay right there it has a plus 
and it has a minus. Okay. So, the way it would work, when the meter did work, you would adjust your f-stop or the shutter speed until you got the needle right in the middle, and you take your picture. However, this camera, this generation of cameras, the light meters are not accurate anymore, or they don't work entirely, or the battery compartment, people left the batteries in and they leaked and they got destroyed. So when you buy these cameras, don't expect to use the light meter at all. Remember my motto, always use your Sekonic handheld light meter. Mine is the L508. Okay, I highly recommend these light meters. All right, yes, they're 300 bucks used, but your photographs will come out wonderful. In fact, you can see the 6x9 negative that I shot yesterday perfectly exposed, thanks to the Sekonic L508. Okay, so let's get back on track. 35 millimeter versus six by nine. Now, yesterday I went out shooting this photograph. Okay, this is a half frozen lake with a bridge, with snow, and the trees. Okay, with this camera. This is, I've introduced you to this before, the Fujika G690. 690 stands for six by nine. BL Breech Lock Pro. The breech lock stands for the system of changing the lens. Okay, changing the lens here. This turns, it's a breech lock, comes right off, switch lenses, goes right on, turn, and it locks. Red dot to red dot over here and turn it and you're locked in good to go big difference right that's a built-in to the lens leaf shutter this is standard shutter 35 millimeter curtains in the back shutter Okay, so let's just talk about this camera, for example. Uh, the Fujika G690 came out in 1969. It's in great shape because they were meant for professionals. All steel construction, okay? Uh, I think the only plastic on here might be this covering over the eyepiece for the viewfinder right here. This might be plastic. And that's about it, okay? Um, it sold for originally seven hundred and sixty dollars back in nineteen sixty nine. Seven hundred and sixty dollars. Today, right now, they're selling for five hundred and eighty in good condition with a lens from Japan. Five hundred and eighty plus another fifty for shipping. So they've only lost about 5% of their value. 5% since 1969. Now, they had a system. They the, First of all, there's only three lenses for this camera. Okay, This is the 50mm um, equivalent. This is the 100mm lens. Okay, It's a 3.5. Okay, Fujinon lens. Now, the system was, say you had a roll of film in here. Okay, and it was you were exposing it and you wanted to change lenses. Now you couldn't just take this off because the shutter is in here, there's nothing blocking the light. So they had a system where you would turn this wheel and inside a curtain a curtain would go across from here to here, blocking the light change your lens, and then you would open the curtain again. Unfortunately, since 1969, about 95% of these cameras, the Fujika G690s, 
the curtains no longer work. Most people just cut them out or push them back in like I did. I just pushed mine back and never bother with it again. It has nothing to do with the functionality of taking photographs. It's only necessary if you want to change lenses midstream. But since this camera, this 120 film size camera, 6x9, it only takes eight pictures. So if you want to change lenses, which most people don't because most people only have the one lens, the one that came with the kit, you might as well just wait till you finish a roll of eight frames. It's not like you have to wait till you finish a roll of 36 frames, like a 35 millimeter. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we can talk about. The difference, okay, the difference between a 6x9 negative and a 35 millimeter negative. Now, try and keep, keep up with me. Um, as far as these dimensions, the dimension of a 35 millimeter frame is in actuality 24 millimeters this way by 36 millimeters this way. So it's a 24 by 36 millimeter. Six by nine frame of film is 56 millimeters across by 83 millimeters up and down. It's 83 millimeters in length compared to 36 millimeters in length. 36 millimeters high, 83 millimeters high. So we're talking about almost three times in length and 24, across, 24 millimeters across here and 56 across here nearly double okay or more than double so what advantage there's many advantages I right, we talked about that there's more information in a larger negative okay there's more detail the main advantage to using a medium format 6x9 or a 6x6 okay format film is the cropping advantage. If you need to crop out, okay, say you just wanted to crop out the center, okay, and make a make it 11 by 14, no problem. There's plenty of information there. But try and do that with a 35 millimeter. Just crop out the center and make it 11 by 14 that way. You would have some issues with clarity, sharpness, um, grain, not so much of a problem because we're analog photographers. Grain is part of the process. But as far as information, okay? So that is um, the plus advantage of the medium format. The plus advantage, of course, for the 35 millimeter is 36 frames compared to 8 on the 6 by 9 okay? So that's a very big advantage. Um, you have more shots per roll, cost, right? There's a whole cost factor there, all right? Um, the cameras are cheaper, right? $100, right? Working, this Fujika is 100 working condition with a lens. All right, forget about the light meter, okay? And this is 6, 630. This Fujika, right, is 630 working range finder no meter okay so yes you can buy six or perhaps seven of these fujikas with a lens compared to one of these fujikas okay however once you start seeing results okay once you start seeing results from your medium format like this detail all the way across and all the way up and down all right you will soon see why medium format works better as far as detail than a 35 millimeter okay now getting back to Ari uh, 
shoot on film the website the uh, YouTube that the channel that I want you to go to okay he's the one that explained he lives in Finland okay it's a snowy country he loves taking pictures of the snow and he's the one that will explain to you what take your light meter reading okay and then increase exposure by two stops that's his motto and that's how you get the detail in the snow otherwise it'll just be all gray or all white and you won't see any detail okay so these two shots were taken with that 6x9 the Fujika G690 okay and what I want you to do is go to my website go to my online gallery CarmineTaverna.com you'll see them you can scroll through uh, in high definition and you just scroll through and it'll tell you the equipment that I use the film in fact in this case yesterday right for this shot okay I used the uh, Ilford Delta 100 black and white film it was developed in D76 1 plus 3 for 23 minutes at 61 degrees Fahrenheit with normal agitation okay um let's see what else oh email me black and white photo at aol.com email me about any questions you have about photography if you just want to comment below and ask a question that's fine too just comment below and please subscribe right over here just hit the red box all right guys oh and a thumbs up you know i like a thumbs up all right, guys, uh, I think we covered everything today. Um, remember, this is your best friend when it comes to accurate exposure. Okay, the Sekonic, any Sekonic handheld light meter is fine. But this one, the L508, I highly recommend because it gives you the opportunity to take three spot meter readings okay and then hit the button that says average and it will average the three spots that you took for example yesterday i spotted took a spot meter reading here in the lake in the snow and in the trees i hit the button that says average it gave me the average reading i think it was 250 at f8 um with 100 speed film it was very bright out yesterday and of course the snow it adds to the reflective light okay so uh i can't stress enough how the Sekonic light meter is the most important tool in your bag and that's whether you're using a 100 dollars fujika camera right or a 600 dollars fujika g690 okay this is the most important tool in your kit um remember I was a little controversial uh, last month or two months ago when I was the only photographer on YouTube I have 49 years of experience that admitted that the uh, Sunny 16 rule generally doesn't work. The Sunny 16 rule uh, is a last ditch effort if you're Sekonic handheld light meter should drop to the ground and smash. Okay? And you have to finish shooting that day. Fine. Use the Sunny 16 rule. But I'm telling you that there are more photographers out there that were disappointed with their exposures using Sunny 16 over a Sekonic handheld light meter. Okay? Perfect exposures. Dare I say every time? Every time. Every time perfect exposure with the Sekonic L508 okay now um, am I sponsored by Sekonic no you know who I'm sponsored by I'm sponsored by this guy uh, am I sponsored by Fujika which is now Fujifilm no I'm just a photographer with nearly five decades of experience I photograph magazine covers okay including this one from industrial photography um, classroom trained 
classically trained, okay? And I want to share my experience with you guys. And I felt the need to 46 episodes ago when I said, you know what? I've been learning from my 50 top YouTube photography channels. So I also have information to add. So if we all, all photographers, throw our information into the hat, the YouTube hat, do you know how wonderful that would be? If everyone shared their knowledge, it would be great. So guys, have a great day. Don't forget to go to Shoot on Film by Ari Jaxi. There's a link down below. His YouTube photography channel is fantastic. I highly recommend it. All right, guys. Um, have a great day. It's going to warm up today here in New York. It's going to hit 40. It's going to start melting all the snow. Rain's coming. Wash off the tons of salt <laughs> that's out on the ground. All right, guys. Have a great day. Carmine from New York saying, be good. <laughs>